Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Why he does became so important and unique for the band? Right? Because he's an outsider. He came from the outside. He didn't grow up in a wind band. He didn't play in high school. He was son of the music director, church organist of the St. Stephen Cathedral. So his main instrument is the keyboard instruments. He played all of them, the cellist, the harpsichord, piano, and, and, and the organ. And he was already an internationally celebrated composer because of his first oboe concerto that became immediately a big hit and mandatory, obligatory piece on international in the competitions all over the world. Um, this is when he was invited to the band world to write a piece by the Hungarian Band Association. And he just said, no, 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 I don't know what band is. I don't want to do that. And they said, don't worry, we love your music, everything. Just treat the band instrument same way as you do with the orchestra. And he did. And they didn't let him go till the end of his life. The band were just like this, captured him. We want you more. And he did. And he liked it too. Became very successful because of the orchestration and, and the musical ideas, his vocabulary, everything. So the, when you conduct a Hidash piece, you are not a band conductor, you are a conductor. How did he do that? The second movement themes of the of the, the concerto for symphonic band is a very good example for that. For example, here's the first theme of the second movement that is uh, the harmonic tetrachord. Sounds like this. <laughs> As you can hear, it's very keyboard centered, happy, up moving, uplifting, uh, uh, circular fifth uh, surrounding idea. So, no movement, no target, uh, no goal orientation. We are already at the, at the final stage. And uh, how can you orchestrate that for the band? Well, he was told to uh, do the same way as you would do with the orchestra. So, he did. And he uses, as you can see here in the score, the high woodwind instruments for the music. As you can see, he applies the clarinets, the flutes, the piccolo, the oboes, the choringly, the saxophones, and also uh, to get a heavenly uh, sound, he adds the glockenspiel to the characteristics. And this is how it sounds with the band. Let me invite for you the Dutch Royal Military Band, who is doing a really good job with that piece, and they will play for us. Here we are. So this is the first uh, movement. How can you come up with a contrasting a second thing, because the form is A, B, C, A. The second has to be totally different. He, it is very different. This is how it sounds, the second thing. orchestrate that. Everything has to be contrasting, right? Otherwise, it's not interesting. So we had the high woodwinds for the first theme. So we need the brass instrument for the second one. And he's doing that. Uh, he's adding the main theme, as you can see here, to the cornets. Uh, the cornets play uh, as a solo of the theme. Here we are. Cornet one and the second uh, joining us with the chords. The horns are playing a nice supporting pedal notes like the piano light, uh, right pedal. And you can see the basses and up moving like pizzicato characteristic uh, uh, harmonic arpeggiation of the uh, chord. So the melody moves down, the bass is moving up. And after the woodwinds, we got the brass sound. So beautiful, contrasting color timbre that sounds in the band with the same groove, uh, something like this.
very nice performance. So we got two very nice contrasting uh, themes. How can you come up with the third one? Uh, because uh, the, the, the more the better. So this is how he's doing it. Here's the third uh, musical idea. Can you orchestrate that contrasting with the previous two uh, besides changing the tonal center? He came up with a great idea. He mixes together the woodwinds and the brasses, and here is this is his solution for the challenge. Uh, and uh, you will love it, I promise, because now the main theme is coming on the woodwinds, the clarinets, a legato, piano, beautiful, very virtuosic material that with, with uh, these notes, uh, very challenging for the clarinet players. And let's support the clarinet characteristics with the contrasting separated harmonic repetitions uh, on, on the horns. And when you see the low brass, the trombones are playing now, the pedal with the tuba. So we have the pedal notes, harmonic support from the trombones. You can see the trumpets are just uh, giving a little extra color with the harmonic movement. The horns are repeating the notes, and the clarinets are the main actors at this time. Let's see how the, the same band is playing for us at this time. Isn't it just beautiful, contrasting, colorful? So you as a conductor, you have to come up with three different kind of gestures. You have to know the score very well. So follow the old school in conducting, such as he follows the old school of composition. And he, with this uh, approach to the band, uh, helped us uh, to get a repertoire that is very unique and very important because it brings you out of the box of the wind band category. And it helps for the conductors getting out of the box of being a band conductor. Because if you know the music, if you know you have the sound concept, you find your gestures and you want to hear based on the, the led by the conducting wheel, that sound that you have in your mind, you are a conductor and not a band conductor. It doesn't matter, it's a, it's a choral music, opera, symphony, strings, wind band. If you know the score, you will be a conductor. And he does helps you with that. He does is a great example for that. Because he does the same as Beethoven did, conveys a message without a problem. I hope you already missed my Hungarian accent and see you next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.